Great. Hi and welcome, everybody. My name is Mark Raines. I'm the head of solutions at Chainlink Labs, uh, and it's an absolute privilege to be here on stage today with this wonderful panel. Um, I'm going to start by just allowing everyone to introduce themselves. Adi. Hi, everyone. Uh, thanks, Mark. Hi, everyone. My name is Adi Hussein. I am the Web3 lead at Vodafone Digital Asset Broker. And Taki. Thank you for having me today. Um, I'm Taiki, the blockchain leader at Sumitomo Corporation. Finally, Nuno. Hi, everyone. Thank you for having me here, Mark. Uh, I'm Nuno Neto. I work at InnoWave, and I'm the business director of the cloud unit. OK, thanks. So turning to you, Adi, can you give us a sense of the sort of problem space that we're talking about and why CCIP is particularly relevant? So global trade is a trillion dollar industry, right? It's massive. It's complex. And for decades, we've been trying to digitalize global trade because it's still largely paper-based. Um, so there's already a lot of platforms out there. There's already a lot of applications. And what we are trying to do today is not to build another application or another platform or like a super chain to bring everybody in. What we're trying to do is to interconnect all of these existing platforms together so that they can interoperate and do business together globally, right? So that's, that's the goal. And that's why CCIP is, is really interesting for us, because as a business, you've invested in certain platforms. You don't want to leave that platform and move to another one. What you want to do is use your platform and then be able to do business with all other businesses globally, right? So, and that brings us to our demo today. So our demo today is um, around a trade document called the Electronic Bill of Lading. So what is it? It's, uh, it's essentially like a legal ownership of who owns the cargo. It tells you where the cargo came from, where it's going, and uh, which vessel it's on, right? So um, the Bill of Lading is a really important document because at the end, the buyer who ordered the goods has to show this document to the shipper so that they can actually get their cargo and then the seller can get paid for sending the cargo, right? So in our demo today, um, the scenario is essentially there is a buyer in Japan, for example, Sumitomo, and there's a seller in the US. They want to trade some machinery equipment together. And um, this uh, simple trade will go across five different organizations, right? So the buyer, the seller, they're all on different plat platforms and uh, also the buyer's bank and the seller's bank and the shipper themselves, right? So um, what we'd like to do today is to show you how easy it could be to interoperate between different chains. And uh, I'm going to hand over now to Nuno, who's going to bring you through the demo. OK, Adi. Thank you very much. So um, this, go this demo is going to demonstrate the usage of uh, Chainlink CCIP. Uh, the features and the capabilities uh, for a use case on the global trade, okay? So we have this uh, world map here with the players that are uh, involved in this transaction. Um, here we have uh, the buyer, it's in Japan, as uh, Adi say, and here we have the seller. Over here, it's the carrier, which is uh, the, 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 the responsible for bringing the goods from the seller to the buyer. And we also have the banks, okay? The seller bank, uh, and uh, the buyer bank. So as you can see also, uh, these five players have five different systems. We are trying to simulate that here with five blockchains, different blockchains and uh, different accounts, uh, each one of them, OK? Good. So um, the process will start after the buyer agrees to purchase with the seller. The seller will then um, contact the carrier and the carrier will look at the order and uh, checks if everything is okay. And then it will create the document, which is called the bill of lading. So this document is very important because this is the title of the ownership of the goods. Okay? So it's uh, the document that represents the goods. And it goes and creates this document and sends uh, the document to uh, the seller. And here is where uh, CCIP enters uh, to play. So it, uh, with interoperability between chains, we can send this document from one chain to another chain. So in this case, uh, from a polygon chain to an Ethereum chain. Okay? And uh, as you can see, it's in yellow because it will take time to validate the transaction between one chain 
to another one. Good. So uh, now the seller has this document uh, on this possess possession, is the ownership of the document at this moment, and now the next step is I want to get paid. Okay, so what we are going to, we're going to do is to talk with this bank, okay? He's going to talk with this bank with using the same process that I described earlier on, from one chain to another chain, so it passes the, doc the document to uh, the chain of the, the seller's bank, and the seller's bank will contact the buyer's bank, okay? So this is the process. And now the buyer's bank will uh, pay to the seller uh, the amount. So one thing is important now, everything uh, is in green, at least the transactions that we did before, meaning that the transactions were validated. So here we can see the source uh, chain and on the other, uh, the destination chain. So everything was okay the, with the transactions. Very well. After that, the next step is uh, the, the bank of the buyer says, okay, you have, you have paid the, the merchandise, uh, uh, and now he sends the, the letter to the buyer. Now the buyer has the ownership of the, the cargo. So he finally has this document that says, this is my, my merchandise. But he is not able yet to pick it or to uh, get it from the, the warehouse or the port that, uh, the, where the cargo is. He needs to send the bill of lead again to the carrier, okay? And now the carrier uh, re releases and gives the order so, so the buyer can pick it up, okay? So this is the, the flow, okay? One more thing is during the transportation, we can also measure some parameters like the temperature or the position or which port uh, the, the, the ship was. Uh, and this information can be sent to a ledger, to the carrier ledger probably, and uh, it will bring more transparency to the process itself. So it's a delivery process, a normal delivery process using blockchain behind the scenes. Um, so this is uh, how we are sh using uh, Chainlink uh, to, to put a common and a standard process to the global trade process. Okay? One other thing that we are planning to do in the future is to put the tokenomics on top of this. And uh, using, for example, stable coins, so to the old process to be ev even richer and more powerful and simple for everybody that is involved in this process. Okay, that's it. Thank you very much. <laughs> I will pass to Mark now. Okay, thanks, Nino. So let's just summarize what we just saw there. Um, a document which represents the title of ownership of a consignment of goods, typically a very high value consignment of goods, was issued onto a blockchain as, as an on-chain asset. That asset was then uh, transferred securely and efficiently across five different entities, all on different blockchains. Um, and along with that asset, we're also defining the, the set of rules and constraints that govern how that can be updated and evolved over time. All of this were done with, was done without the need for a trusted intermediary or central point of control of any type. Now, as you can imagine, that requires quite a lot of technical, uh, there's quite a lot of technical challenges in solving that, and CCIP uh, is, is, is a framework which really solves those problems, but presents a very, very simple application programming, programming interface to the developers. In fact, this particular application um, was designed, built, and tested by a single developer in just a few days, and I think that's really a testament to the design philosophy of CCIP. Um, it's really what we're all about at Chainlink. It's we're, we're, what we're doing is we're abstracting away the technical details and complexity of these systems so that you, the community, community can focus on what's important, which is solving problems for your industry. Okay, so now I'm going to um, just conclude the session with a couple of questions for you, Taki. Um, firstly, what business value does CCIP enable in the context of global trade? Thank you for asking, Mark. So at first, for those who don't know Sumitomo well, uh, Sumitomo Corporation is a global trading and investment company headquartered in Tokyo with more than 100 offices in global. We have a wide variety of businesses, but uh, uh, in, in the very first point, uh, our business is originally from the import and export business since its in inception 100 years ago. And uh, as Adi, Adi mentioned, 
interoperability of a digital platform is a huge issue in global trade. Some companies, organizations, and uh, digital consor consortiums are now tackling this issue. But most of these implementations are connectivity of uh, application layer and still under proof of concept. There seems to be some difficulties like uh, long developing time and very costly because they have to connect each other one by one. And there are so many digital platforms there. So we think if there is a hub of connectivity of much lower layer like database or um, network, it could be a good solution with less developing time and cost and more flexibility of services. So back end of the digital platform is a uh, blockchain, enterprise blockchain, and the CCIP can connect um, different many blockchains. So we think uh, our project could be a good product to solve this interoperability issue. Excellent. And can you just briefly just summarize what Vodafone and Sumitomo are planning for the next stage of the project? Yes. So we, we've just started. So at the first stage, we just completed the uh, test of uh, dummy electric bill of lading tr successfully transferred to uh, among five blockchain. And uh, as a next step, we are planning to connect with real digital platform and uh, systems of other stakeholders like banks. And uh, we are now approaching to the uh, trading consortium digital platform and also electric bill of lading company. And iterating tests, uh, once we successfully build a good hub of connectivity, we will expand the services, adding some functions like uh, stablecoin payments or contracting using uh, IoT technology like uh, Vodafone Digital Asset Broker. And uh, yeah, so through this project, we hope we contribute to a digitalization of global trade. And um, the last but not least, um, we are very open, always open, and we want to connect more players in this industry. So yeah, feel free, please feel free to uh, contact us and uh, happy to talk. Excellent, thank you very much. Okay, well that concludes the session today. I'd like to thank everyone for attending and wish you all a great day too at Smartcom. Thank you.